Welcome back my dear friends, my dear archers all over the world. Today we have another bow review obviously. And this one is from Krosa, the long Hungarian bow. We had already the short Hungarian bow. My friend in Germany, Dirk Wenzel, already got the short one, sent it to me so I can test it. And now he bought the long one from Krosa, biocomposite obviously, and said listen. You can test it and then you can even do a comparison, which I think is a very good idea. Because the short one was very nice, but of course my extra 30 inches is for some not enough. So that's why Grosa makes you a long, or the normal version, not the long version, which has then 32 inches. But I have no idea now what the poundage is or nothing. 44 pounds, okay, now I know. It's the Hungarian, I say it now long, by a composite by Grosa. It's uh, strung 56 and 5 eighths of an inch, unstrung 62 and 3 quarter of an inch, has a brace head of 7 and a quarter. This one has 44 pounds at 28. You can have this bow from 30 to 65 pounds. Extra 32, no recommendation of arrow weight. And that's all. And then you have, of course, this, uh, like we know it, pressed sinew plates, the, 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 the processed horn. A nice wood sears, handle, and the wrapping looks pretty good. And of course I will do a comparison later, not today. The price of this bow is 395 euros plus shipping. Good. With what we, or what I want to know, not we, most probably only me. It's okay. So from knock to knock we have 58 inches. The loops have roughly three inches. Just oh, it shall be shall be shall be cobra. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. It's 51 inches. Everything in horn covered. Oh there is a scratch mark already, so I guess he shoots from here. Mm -hmm. And we have 23 and a half. It's good. Bow is heavy. Quite a short string, huh? For this long bow. And still, it's, it, it was, in, I don't know where he got that from, but this is simply unused weight. This is, we could cut it off here and it would be still perform nice, but we would have less weight on the sears. But it's not me. Yeah, I'm not the bow builder. Let's see how easy 44 pounds on two string. Oi, oi, oi. It's easy. <laughs> Look at this pretty. And directly, see? This is a horn bow, like for my taste. Directly out of the box works. Not like heating up the limbs and bending for two hours. And so, the thing is. Brace head. Where do you measure the brace head? Normally they say from the deepest part of the handle, but this is a regulation from, from the ATA standard, I guess, when you have your, your pistol grip. Here you could say now from the from this part of the handle, then it would be seven and a half inches, but I would always say where you have where you shoot your arrow. So there is the arrow pass, and from there I go back, and then we have seven and three quarter inches. Maybe it will go down seven and a quarter, he said. But it depends how you measure, I think. I'm not sure if there's a standard somewhere. If you know, let me know. Besides this ATA standard, deepest part of the handle. Juk. 595, oh, we scratch the 600 grams. 595, sounds good. Grams, of course, not pounds. Oh, so. 
so wiggly, yeah, but we know it's not wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're surprised by this butter smooth draw. It's a grosser bow, what can I say? You don't have to do reviews of grosser bows anymore. And last time somebody asked you which grosser bow, he shall get this one or this one. I said, look, it doesn't matter. Simply check what draw length you want to have and which design speaks to you and then get them because they are all... These biocomposite bows are just awesome. So, this bow is supposed to do 32 inches. Let's see. Oh, until here. Oh, oh, fuck. Shh. He kicks a bit with 465 grain. At full draw, we end up roughly, I guess maybe I need heavier arrows. You need to see. Uh, two and a half pounds per inch. Four inches more draw than we are roughly at. 54 so then 460 is already a little lightweight and these ones are 400 they are then already way too lightweight so i need to get heavy arrows for this guy so i get more heavy arrows and then we start shooting 550 grain we only have two left goes through the target. The draw is really, really nice. You never drew as a grosser bow. Nice. You still feel it. So even with 10 grain, you feel a little kick in the hand. Uh, yeah. And then you feel it a little more with 460 grain, obviously. But it doesn't feel like dry firing. You only kicks a little. So this bow likes heavy arrows. But does cut and string twist and everything. Nice. So draw is this. this simply wow. Let's see directly which damage we can do back there on 30, which would be now 28 meters with the heavy arrows. Oh, this is just where your point arrow goes. It's a gross apple. Bit low. More lightweight. Oh, now it throws easy 32. They always get a little more flexible after a few shots. Yeah, now it's now I have it. <laughs> String is thin, thin as we know it, so oh, you might need to modify your knocks. And oh, it kicks quite a little with this lightweight arrow, so I would go with 10 grain at least. Might not be then the fastest, but I think it's worth it. Otherwise, this hand joke. Usually, there's no need to measure a grosa bow, but we do it because we have here some kind of little differences. And now let's see what I get out of it. 28 is here, 43.5, and this is 44, so it's just fine, I guess. So in 30 inches we have such a pretty bow, 48.5, so we have exactly five pounds more, means two and a half pounds per inch. <laughs> so strong, just fine. In 32, we end up at 54. And then there is no end. 54.5. Oh, nice. Thank you, scale. Zoom 28. And of course, with the sea angle is quite, uh, quite, quite thing. See, 28. A little, nah, but we have your slight bend. So, 27 inches, I guess. 27 inches. 
see angle of, my AC angle of 60 degrees, but fine by me. 30. Look at this. Pretty ball. 32. And then there's still easy, easy press. Look, looks gorgeous. And we'll do 33, but limit it to 32, which is just fine. Such a pretty bow. Look, as we know it, the sea is long, reinforced here. For my taste, still too long here, unused weight, but you can step someone with it. Grocer's signature, then this nice whipping, the pressed sinew, the processed horn, a little wood in the middle, the next whipping, a nice handle. There runs the sinew over it. Nice, and it looks like looks like it wants to be used. String always very thin with uh, with Grosje's special string material, but it works. 550 grain. Oh, they go through 465 grain, 179, solid, nothing to complain, 177, <laughs> little, you know, little. So 180 foot per second with these lightweight arrows and with 10 grain we had 100, I oh, forgot now. It's for this bow perfect, so you can't ask for anything else. This bow just performs nicely. So these knocks, even my U knocks are very, they don't knock really. Yeah, but this bow just performs. Now look at this. So they most probably go a little off. Underspined. Ah. So the destroyers, I don't mind. Now look at this. Huh? I like this bow. It's totally not my design. But this is where you point the arrow goes, so it's Incredible, and you have one, two, three, four, five. You have a little bit going on, so and you feel it directly in the hand. So there is like so this oscillation of the string transfers directly into the handle. Might get better with time. See the curves? I hold the bow completely upright so you see what the bow or how the bow looks like. At 32. Oh, this is such <laughs> keys. Nice. So 10 grain, you need 10 grain arrows. Oh, and then this bow stamps the arrows into the target. 460 grain is too light. But even string twist and katra torque depends on your hand. I try now torque because this is quite a squarish handle. Could work. Let's see. Yeah, not too bad. See you again. 
Yeah, yeah, but he doesn't feel like I would do torque with this one. But the slight cutter and a bit string twist is just nice. But this bow can handle torque. So if you should torque with this, you need to get used to it. That you over grip here a little, that you can apply them with your fingers this torque. And it's fine. So this bow is just <laughs> nothing short but amazing. So if you consider this one now as your horseback bow, if 32, if 30 inches max throw is enough, get the shorter one for sure for horseback. But if you need to throw 32 inches, because you're a tall guy or a tall girl, look at this, these arrows line just up and then you are simply easy. This way around. Yeah. Yup. Yup. Yeah, why not? Why not? He said. I only don't like this feeling of having arrows, but that's me. How would you be with Slavic? Huh? You Slavic, you. <laughs> I'm not used to it anymore. So with this bow, you can do literally everything. You guys in America, you can go hunting with this one, get a 50 pound or 55 pound with this. It's, it's just, it's quite accurate, this thing. And speed is enough for heavy arrows. So we have quite some nice performance out of this bow. Really, really nice. The draw is extremely nice. Nothing, nothing to complain with this bow. There you have it, amazing bow again, but I didn't expect anything else and anything less. For me, I don't know, I think I like the shorter one more, but I will do a comparison of them. But if you draw 32 inches and you like this style of Hungarian bow, this is just, and now it's another bow wants to draw even nicer. So if you need it a few times, you know, you need to warm it up and, you know, it takes a little bit of care, requires a little bit, you know what I mean. So, uh, bow string, sleeve and a, you get up with this warranty card. It's like bowstring sleeve documentation, six points. Yeah, we could do more, Shaba. But handling, so this bow, easy peasy. Stringing, easy. Uh, there is no wiggle, so even a step through method, even if it's not the best for this bow. It's totally no problem, so even a beginner can string this bow. Easy to handle, easy. It's, it's really easy. Maybe warm up the limbs a bit before you string it, because you really, or I really felt that it's a little stiff in the beginning, and now the bow is like, now it's like, yee. And this bow after a thousand shots gets even better. So handling 10. Built nothing to complain, nothing. It's, it's a grosser bow, and it's just, beautiful as it is craftsmanship wise reinforced sears nicely made the string groove here the knock groove knock is deep enough has a slight recess so the no string stays in the string by itself is made nicely this whipping looks with this bow just gorgeous you have your horn you have your sinew and all the hornbow builders will be, and uh, no, some hornbow builders will be upset again because Grosje builds nice bows. So, 10. The basic feel is as this bow doesn't wiggle, the handle feels for me a bit too squarish. So it's quite narrow, but then deep. But on the other side, you, you get used to it, it dressed nice, so you have this, I mean, you can even shoot this, you know, whatever. But here, even Falon, Fal, Falon, Falcon, Talon, Talon's Falcon, whatever works. So here you can do whatever works for you, but this one really finds its place easy in your hand. And then it's even, it's a little longer, easy, easy to control easy to manage so no, nothing to complain there basic field 10 draw experience i would need to give now 11 because this is just 28 29 30 31 32 but you feel a little bit 
handle bending. This is what we know that I don't like that much, but it's there. So the handle is slightly, from here you feel it and that the handle is coming backwards a little. So handle is a little bending. And we have this, maybe because of this, a little, this hand shock, this vibration going on. So the, the oscillation of the string really hits a little hard in the handle. <coughs> but draw 10. I got carried away shooting experience. You shoot a few arrows and you know what this bow is doing. But as I said, it rattles a little and nuggles a bit. So that's why you get a nine here. Then we have 49, 55 points. And price value 395 euros for a biocomposite laminated bow with this performance, with this design, <coughs> and with Shaba Grosser's knowledge built in. Complete no brainer. You, you have a bit shipping, whatever, 30, 40, 50 euros shipping, and then you have a really dream bow. And you really need to experience this draw. This is like, there's nothing. So there is not this springy feeling like you have with a fiberglass bow, which I like. You know, with the with the last one with the with the hagan, I like the springiness. Here it's like okay, the limb simply comes back. It doesn't feel like it wants to go forward, but then it snaps back. It's it's different from a normal fiberglass laminated bow, and you really need to experience that. So everybody should get a grosser bow. <sighs> nice. So we have everything. Thank you very much, Shaba, for building this nice bows. Soon you get the comparison of this one versus the short one. But I think I like the shorter one more, even if I don't like 30 inch straw, but I don't know yet, but we see then in the video. And that's all I have for you today. It's getting dark, the mosquitoes come out and I get eaten alive. Thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. I catch you in the next one.